Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. Now, I'm not sure you're going to be able to tell by the title of today's video, but there is a ton of information and changes and transformation that we need to talk about. I'm pretty sure that you are feeling this and you have observed this type of energy in your life. It is a shove, a nudge from the universe that is direct and forceful into the direction of clarity. There is a lot of inner reflection, inner awareness, inner aha moments and awakenings that is going to be downloaded to you if you haven't felt that already. Because of the way that the planets are currently moving, it's going to be happening a lot in your interpersonal relationships as well as your relationship with yourself. I hope that makes sense. Go ahead and grab some lemonade. That's what I'm sipping on right now. Grab some tea, grab some coffee, grab some water, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So as I promised, guys, there is a ton of transits and energies that we need to talk about that i need to break down that we need to digest like i said in the very beginning of this video chances are you're feeling these energies significantly i want to start off by taking a few steps backwards before we take a dive into the week ahead and the reason why i do this is because there's transits that have already taken place there's major transition that has already taken place that you are already feeling and to be able to look back helps you to understand where it is that you are currently sitting right now now we haven't been able to talk in a minute partly the major reason for that is because here in florida we were getting rocked by hurricane milton and then before that hurricane helene i believe was the name of that hurricane hurricane milton was a little bit more intense Hurricane Helene came a little earlier, gave us a lot of perspective and taught Floridians real quick that we need to take these storms more seriously than the state collectively had. So we are rebuilding. The internet is down. The power was out. There was flooding. It was a disaster and still is a disaster. The neighborhood is building. So I do want to say thank you guys for being patient with me while we were kind of navigating through those storms. And also, I want to extend that grace for you to give that to yourself and others as every single one of us is individually kind of navigating through our own personal through our own personal storms. Let's give ourselves a lot of space and time and patience as we figure this shit out. <laughs> one other thing that you'll notice if you guys are like, okay, something seemed a little off about her, my allergies have emerged with a full vengeance. It could be a lot worse but it could be a whole lot better. And I think it has a lot to do with the storm kind of kicking up some dust and dander or something in the environment, in the trees we were out there working in the garden and stuff and cutting branches down and big branches. And I think that they it kind of activates my allergies. So if you see me kind of sniffling or pausing, it's because I'm sneezing and I'm gonna be probably most likely editing those major aggressive sneezes out. All right. Enough about me, let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the fact that October 9th, Jupiter went retrograde in the sign of Gemini. Now, I'm gonna have a whole separate video breaking this down, but for the sake of today's video and what is that you can expect, Jupiter brings expansion and wisdom <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and philosophy, <clears throat> spirituality, travel, and education. When it's transiting through the sign of Gemini, this brings all of those energies inward when it comes to the realms of connections and community, like social connections, how we communicate others, the places that we go to connect with others, small trips, small jaunts, and communication as a whole. One thing that it is that I'm, I'm watching as I'm looking at these transits is that Jupiter specifically has been teaching us a lot when it comes to expanding our own, our perspective. This is where we've been shifting our beliefs, our core beliefs, from what we were learned to what we inherently believe deep within our soul and our 
in our inner wisdom what is our inner truth not what someone tells us but when we sit with ourselves and we ask ourselves the inner question what is right what is wrong morally what are we down for what are your spiritual beliefs that's when you start to come to answers for yourself and not what the world or your family or your upbringing or, or your community has told you now that jupiter is retrograde again this is starting october 9th we're going to be feeling this all the remainder of this year this process of analyzing and reflecting now even though jupiter rules our wisdom philosophy spirituality travel education it doesn't necessarily lock our lock us each individually into those categories exclusively Keep in mind that these are very specific messages for a general audience. So basically what this means is that you're going to want to look into your chart and see what Gemini rules in order to see what category, what section of your life this transit is going to be moving through. This planet is going to be transiting through so that you can see, okay, this is impacting the area of my friendships. Let's say Jupiter is transiting through your 11th house. Now Gemini energy rules your 11th house this would uh, be highlighting friendships and social media hopes and wishes you may find that you're learning a lot about what type of friendships and connections it is that you need are, are your friendships are your connections fostering your growth are you not growing within your relationships have you scaled back are you not learning lessons are there things that you can do better? Are there lessons that you should have learned? Well, major, majorly it has a lot to do with lessons. Are, there's, are there things that you should have been learning at this point that now Jupiter is going to have you pause, reflect, reassess, and adjust so that that area of your life can actually expand and be abundant and buoy itself once it goes direct again? This is another one of those planets that is making us slow down significantly we have saturn retrograde neptune retrograde chiron retrograde uranus retrograde jupiter retrograde pluto just went direct we'll talk about that in a second but there's so many planets these major planets that in my opinion don't get enough attention don't get the recognition that is that they deserve for as long and as hard and as deep okay <laughs> yeah that sounds wild um as they will be impacting us so Oftentimes in astrology world, people will talk about this transit initially as it happens and then forget about it and start put placing the blame and pointing fingers at transits that are minor in comparison to the magnitude of these major, major planets. And it's really important that we keep reminding ourselves why because we need to know where this energy is coming from we need to understand it so that we can learn from it and grow from it instead of feeling crushed defeated misunderstood misaligned there's a lot to be learned here so back to that example that it was that i was saying with let's say gemini oversees your 11th house of friendships this is where you start to look at yourself and how you've shown up for your friendships for your connections or how others have shown up for you i do want to say that with jupiter turning retrograde this is not so much you can't control what other people do and this energy doesn't really give a lot of emphasis on what others are doing so much as far as like the energy that you bring and what you do with the vibes and how people kind of react to what it is that you're doing if there are parts of yourself that refuse to grow up that refuse to mature you will find that your that area of your life will be stunted why because jupiter as wise as it is as smart as intelligent and interconnected as it is it still loves a good time and sometimes anything in any outside moderation could be bad or it will create imbalance. I don't want to use the word bad, but it will create imbalance. Jupiter, when it is ill ill functioning, it could be, I don't say dismissive, but it doesn't see, it doesn't take things seriously. It wants to have a good time all the time. And for that reason, if you are like holding your friendships and, you're, and I'm using the, the example of friendships for just a, a general audience but definitely again look at your your natal chart um but let's say if you don't hold your friendships in a way that 
is gives it the sacredness, like the sacred energy and the respect that it deserves, you will find that Jupiter retrograde, even though Jupiter is known for like buoyancy and lightness and fun and being jovial and intelligent and wise and spiritual and connected, it will start to turn in. You'll start to turn within and say, I actually contributed to the breakdown of of this connection. I contributed to the stunted growth of this of this relationship that it is that I'm that I'm in right now. Another example could be money. Let's say that the universe has been teaching you a lot or at least attempting to teach you a lot um, by giving you blessings. Remember Jupiter pours into our lives through opportunities, through networking. If you find during Jupiter retrograde or Jupiter direct that you were not taking those connections and you weren't networking, like if you weren't taking that those connections seriously, that you weren't respecting them, if you're abusing them or not even following through on communication with them, when Jupiter retrograde begins, again, this was October 9th in Gemini, it's going to have you thinking, pondering, reflecting on, damn, how did I contribute to the loss of this important connection? Why can't I no longer, why, why am I no longer... Um, abundantly thriving in this area of my life. Well, it's because you didn't take it seriously enough. You didn't tap into it. You didn't respect it. You didn't develop it. You didn't grow it. You didn't learn. Remember, Jupiter connects to learning and wisdom and exploration and asking questions and the joy of, of that growth. So if you're not tapping into that, then, you know, you're going to feel the effects. I said I was going to do a whole video about this, but at this point, I've pretty much broken that down as far as um as far as i need to um for the moment let's move on to the next astrological transition that it is that i'm feeling and that is the fact that and what i'm seeing pluto is finally moving direct in the sign of capricorn october 11th now the first thing that stands out to me with this is always going to be at least for the next few years or next couple years politics government big business and the powers that be when pluto and guys let me know give this video a thumbs up if you remember me talking about this when pluto entered into the sign of capricorn this was years ago and kept going retrograde and direct and retrograde and direct we started seeing and i started talking about the breakdown of politics the abuse of politics the abuse of people in positions of power, the revealing of how people have been controlling and manipulating the masses, how they have been getting away with murder, so to speak. And now that Pluto is in the final, final, final degrees of Capricorn, this energy that we thought was over when Pluto entered the sign of Aquarius, when it went retrograde, all of it started to come back again. Now, I don't know if you're watching current events. I don't know if you were watching current events and you turned it off because it's too much. But if you want to talk about the misuse of people in positions of power and how they control and misuse that power in order to take advantage of lesser people or um, really like manipulate in ways that is sick and dark and controlling and possessive and evil though that's the dark shadow side of Pluto when Pluto is in the final degrees it is in the final throes of sweeping that energy up and cleaning it up and pulling it up from the root it is a painful process and the world as we know it changes forever this is not just in business and politics and our government and our money but it goes bigger and deeper and, and branches out into everywhere that this misuse and abuse of power extends, which it, it goes, it branches out into a lot of different directions. So we're going to continue to see that. And now that Pluto is direct, it's going to be less of, I don't want to say less of revelations because now it's more like Pluto is kind of sorting through the muck of what it found it's not looking anymore it's already uncovered and now it's taking the shovel 
and really shift, sifting through and saying, this is what this is. This is what this person did. This is where the abuse happened. This is this misuse of power. And again, you're going to see connections between everything that Capricorn rules. You're going to see how it connects to um, conglomerates, is that the right word? Organizations that bring in a lot of money. One thing that I'm going to publicly say here, I see the NFL or sports networks specifically the NFL, that has been a really specific vision that's been coming through to me. I think there's going to be some really shocking revelations and cover-ups that have been happening there. I probably shouldn't say that on the internet so loudly. If you guys ever want me to talk more about more, I don't say intimate or dangerous conversations that we can't really talk about here on the YouTube channel, Bahati Love Notes is my monthly membership where not only am I pulling cards and the charts for that small collective there throughout the month every month but i talk more candidly about my life and also events that don't necessarily can't necessarily come here on youtube so i'll link that down below along with a coupon code but back to my original thought i i really believe that and i had a vision i'm publicly stating it here that the nfl is going to be caught in some some mess big time mess, um, especially when it comes to um, S trafficking and um, like money laundering, like stuff like that. Anything having to do with the mus misuse of misuse and abuse of sexuality and not just the NFL, but politics, government, money, oh, sorry, music industry, which we're seeing and those people in positions of power that have been, and also the system that set them up to be powerful, the system that has made them be so successful in what it is that they're doing. And it has a lot to do with the S word, S-E-X word, trafficking, um, violation. Pluto rules that part of ourselves that has to do with um, fetishes and the, the controlling of power dynamics through sensuality and sexuality, also violations, also hiding, also laundering, money laundering, tax type of stuff. These are things that we're going to continue to see kind of revealing. Also, people who are in like government, like bigger titles, like titles within the government, their dirty laundry, to put it lightly, starts to come out very... Uh, obvious in ways that before they were protected in ways that we would kind of skim over in the past now no longer this is all going to start happening more rapid fire as if it hasn't been the last few weeks now that Pluto is direct now the reason why the speed of these revelations and the speed of these cases has been picking up is because even though the planet Pluto wasn't necessarily direct at that time, when a planet is transiting from re retrograde to direct, the energies are groggy, but they're waking up. So we start to see the signs of what's to come, even during that retrograde stage when you're nearing the end of it. So how does this impact us <laughs> in our intimate lives, in our intimate world? Well, for many of you guys, I'm going to say that <laughs> like a broken record, you want to look to see what Capricorn is overseeing within your natal chart. Even if you don't have planets, personal planets that fall within Capricorn, Capricorn energy oversees a chunk of your life. And I know I've been promising a video on how to break that down, but, and I will get that up for you guys. Please be patient with me, currently uh, pregnant and dealing with the hurricanes and dealing with the shops and, you know, all of the all of the stuff so um, I am moving at a snail's pace but I'm doing pretty well like my family and my friends were like Jess you're you're handling this really really well like arguably better than um, some of them like I haven't been panicking or anything like that especially with with like disaster like natural natural direct disasters and stuff or just the aches and the pains of pregnancy I've been handling it anyway <laughs> got distracted but um, definitely look to see what Capricorn rules and oversees within your, within your life. So for example, for me, it overlooks relationships. So this is where I could be 
you know, the air, it's, it, it's overseeing my seventh house of relationships and long-term marriage and partnerships. This is where I need to look at the dynamic that I bring, you know, to my relationship and the seriousness and the longevity and the commitment or doing something that is committed for the long haul together as a couple, which we are, and approaching that in a way that is healthy and constructive and balanced for me and ultimately the both of us, our, our family that is that we're creating together. So that's one example I'm putting myself out there. Try to look to see what Capricorn rules within your chart and you'll be able to see where this dynamic is really gonna show. Now, is this a transit that needs to provoke fear? I get that question every single time and I understand someone will say like, Jess, I'm a Capricorn, does this, is this gonna wreck me? Is this gonna destroy me? Is this a bad transit? There's no such thing as a bad transit. What is good or bad or in between is your intention. How have you been moving up until this point? If you have been intentionally being manipulative, intentionally controlling, intentionally fucking up your relationships, intentionally mind messing with people, then when these types of planets go intentionally hiding things, sneaking, sabotaging, you know, you know your conscience. When these planets go direct or when they go retrograde, you're going to feel the effects depending on the energy that you bring to the room. If you're not someone who is out here intentionally messing people up, now there are a few outliers like people who are innocent and they fall through the cracks. Those are whole other transits that we can look at. As an astrologer, you can see that. Um, but for the most part, the majority of us, 99.9 .9, you know, percent, maybe not that high, but you have to look at yourself and look at the energy that you bring to the room. Whatever energy you put out there is what it is that you ultimately will get. Whatever lessons that it is that you are learning are lessons that ultimately it's time for you to learn or there's a way to find healing within, every, with, within that moment. So definitely. Now, I just spent about 20 minutes <laughs> talking about the past and where we sit right now. And now we are going to need to talk about the present and the future and these transits, specifically this week. I don't want to alarm <laughs> anyone, but this is going to be a week October 14th of massive revelation, reflection, oh my God, it was me the whole time, moments. Or in, I can, like this revelation of like, I cannot do this, or I cannot wait, I need to prepare now. There is such a pressure in the planets. A big part of it has a lot to do with Mercury squaring off with Pluto, Mercury entering to the sign of Scorpio, Mars squaring off with Chiron retrograde, retro, uh, Chiron retrograde transiting through Aries right now, the sun directly opposing Chiron, then the full moon. This entire week, I it's to the point where like I can't even break this down individually for you guys. I mean, maybe follow me on TikTok and I'll do every single one of these transits, but I literally don't think it's a good idea for me to break down every single one of these transits because it would be an hour long. I just want to say that uh, just uh, overall, and I, you guys know it's so hard for me not to be thorough, not to be specific, and not to be pinpointed detail, detailed with my predictions as far as I can for, for, for a larger audience. It's a, another thing if we're sitting face-to-face -face, having coffee and pulling your chart. It's a whole other energy when we're talking on the internet, and every single one of us has completely unique astrology charts, and I'm covering all of my bases and making sure that every single one of you are protected, guided, aware, and know what to expect. I just want to say that communication is going to be tense. It's going to feel like things are misaligned. There's going to be miscommunications as if it was like Mercury retrograde, but worse because People are getting triggered. People are defensive. People are getting offended. It may be you, it may be others. There's also this way of like people, how they handle conflict, how they handle tension, how they handle being and feeling vulnerable. When Mercury enters, exits out of Libra, and this is gonna be happening 
on around the 13th please pardon yeah the 13th please pardon my sniffles when mercury exits out of the sign of libra and the sun is currently transiting through the sign of libra you start to get impatient and you start to get worn down by how much you compromised and now all of a sudden you need that what you put out you need it to be replenished you need it to be replaced and you may be looking around in the room and being like okay you owe me this or i gave you this or I gave my heart to you and you can't give me the loyalty or the friendship or the communication or the this that I deserved. There's this awareness of how people move, what you can expect from them, and it can be absolutely disappointing or it could be eye-opening where you're just like, wow, I have never felt this seen, this supported, this loved in a long time. You know, So there's two ways that this can break down. I just want to say that when we're dealing with such intimate energies where people naturally kind of shy away from being vulnerable or expressing themselves or feeling quote unquote powerless, it, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how this will pan out. I'm going to sneeze just a second. The next thing that I'm looking at that I think you guys should be aware of is the sun currently transiting through the sign of Libra, which of course, whenever we think about Libra energy, we're always like relationships and love and partnership and harmony and compromise. And yes, all those things, but let's not be generic and let's not be basic. The sun is currently transiting through Libra, yes, and it does rule all those things, but what it really does look out for is how how we how we're able to balance ourselves and make life kind of work out like our our way of juggling our way of pivoting so that we are not crashing and burning and falling apart as much as we can depending on our growth depending on how much we're working on ourselves depending on who is supporting us depending on our circumstances and our resources all those things can help us or break us the sun is currently directly opposing chiron retrograde in the sign of aries and for this and as Mercury is transiting through the sign of Scorpio as well, the main thing, and we have all these major planets retrograde, the main thing that is that I'm seeing is someone here is 1000% or many of you guys, I'm going to encourage you guys to slow down, to begin to look at or to bring back into your life the things that really bring meaning and value that may not necessarily involve money that may not necessarily involve other people, but the things that bring you joy. For a lot of you guys, you've been exploring a lot of different interests and things that you wanna do and places that you wanna go. It's been very active. Even with the retrogrades, it's been very active. And um, it could be through hobbies, it could be through education, it could be through inner growth and inner healing. You don't need to be jet setting all over the world in order to be active. You don't need to be going to the gym in order to be active, although th those are examples too. It could be spiritual exercise. It could be journaling. It could be um, exp uh, uh, exercising communication, growing a child, <laughs> you know? There's, there's so many different things that have been vigorous in your life. And those are things that kept you busy, kept you focused, they felt, I don't want to say like requirements, but they felt active enough. And I think that with, not I think, I know, that now that the sun is currently transiting through through Libra and directly opposing Chiron retrograde in a sign of Aries, what it is that I'm ultimately seeing here is finding things to balance out the work, the effort that you have done in order to slow down and bring more joy. And I don't say levity to the point where you're just like, on like what is it nitrous oxide is that like some laughing gas i don't know like i don't expect to be like laughing ha ha he he <laughs> throughout life although that would be cool too but um i do see you going you returning back to the spot within yourself that is uncomplicatedly you now let me give you an example it's interesting I can relate to this and I'm going to use myself as an example. When the hurricane was hitting, we were cooking, we were spending time with family, we were going through some fearful moments all together, we had a puzzle, we ate, we slept. Those were all the things that it is that we could do 
but they were very replenishing. Now, the circumstances around us were turbulent. The winds were rocking. The doors, the front door was literally sounded like someone was banging to get in. The walls of the house were banging. The transformers were blowing outside of the windows. Trees toppling over my neighbor's cars and into the streets. The place was wrecked. But when I look back at the time, it was enjoyable. It was transformative. It was beautiful. It was needed. It was replenishing because it reminded me of what's truly important. Not only during the hurricane, but afterwards. Watching the community come together to help each other. Watching each other ask, do you need help? What can I do for you? I have this contact. Let me help you chop this down. Can I get some water from you? Can I charge my phone? Can I get some food? It was, I think, what we all needed. And it was always a blessing in disguise. That's how the divine moves. And from that awareness, it helped me to reset, to refocus on what truly is important. And yes, the sun transiting through Libra could bring in relationships and partnerships. And of course, it could be bonding. But more importantly, the relationship that I felt with myself and the world around me was in harmony. It was peaceful. It wasn't perfect, but it was necessary. It was needed. And it brought something out of me that I forgot about. And for that reason, I will be changed or I move according to that. Also, with Chiron currently retrograde transiting through the sign of Aries, North Node transiting through the sign of Aries, Aries is all about action and what it is that we do in order to protect ourselves, to preserve ourselves, and to advocate and be an ally for others. This also highlights the growth of what feels good and what is healthy and healing and nourishing to who I am, to who you are. Aries rules I am. This goes deeper than ego. It's your purpose, it's your identity, and from that place, that's how you move, that's how you show up to face the world. Aries is the first the first zodiac sign and that leads the rest of the astrology, that re- leads the rest of the horoscope. And it rules our, our how we view the world and from that reaction, how the world views us. So when we put all these pieces together, not only are we asking ourselves what is it that we are attracting, but what is it that we need and how can we how can we literally move in our masculine? What are we doing in our masculine in order to fulfill, to support, to nurture, nourish our feminine and bring both of those aspects of our lives together in a way that is healthy and healed and in alignment and thriving? So That is a whole lot, and then we're going to end the video talking about the fact that, or just letting you guys know that there's a full moon in the sign of Aries, 7.27 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 17th at the end of this week, and there's going to be a whole other video breaking that down. So make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel. If you want more tarot and intuitive readings that are for our collective, Bahati Love Notes is the way to go. It's similar to a Patreon. However, it's a Patreon that I've created. I tend to like to create little hubs around what I'm doing and not these outside entities um, because it helps me organize and it's my business and it's my my contribution. So I'd like to keep it close. That's why I'm not on Patreon. You guys have been asking for a Patreon for me for years. And that was my way of creating it. It's called Bahati Love Notes. Again, they're exclusive readings, once a month membership. And throughout the month, you get readings and intuitive messages and other content. Uh, right now, we are looking at every other day. Some In the last few days, it's been every day. Um, do keep in mind that... There, if I need to take some time off, rem- just a reminder, I'm pregnant and we're very much at the end of the pregnancy. If I do need to take some time off, a little bit of time, I'll let you guys know. We'll pause it. But it, Body Love Notes has been it and it's been helping you guys not only with understanding the energy that's been going around, getting your questions asked, but also journal prompts, self-reflection. You guys know that we go really, really deep here on the YouTube channel. 
So having said that, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please give this video a thumbs up. YouTube is going through it. You giving this video a thumbs up goes a long way. Um, share this video with your friends, your family. Let's get the conversation going down below. What is Libra overlooking within your chart? How are you feeling with Chiron retrograde when it comes to how we're moving and the action that we're taking for our own healing, for our own activity? And are you scared of Pluto <laughs> moving direct? Do you have fear? It's okay if you do. If you have any other questions about astrology, let me know down in the comments. I'll, I'll try to answer as many as I can. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.